Hey guys, welcome to my beginner C sharp series, and this is almost a part two, or you can follow this very separately to showing you how the basics of how to get started with programming and programming C sharp. I'm using this um, rollerball example, which I customized from the Unity tutorials, to show you the basis of how specifically you add game mechanics to your game and get you very much started with using C sharp. Now today we're going to be looking at trigger events and this is really important for any sort of style of gameplay that you choose to add and I will choose I will show you how to create a sort of very simple mechanic and it will incorporate a couple of different things that we're going to learn which will be very concrete on what you do day to day and a trigger event is just something that if we choose to have a sort of invisible box say in the scene and our player rolls up goes into it we can sort of form an event or we can execute some code which will do something depending on whatever we want to do so in this instance here for our rollerball game i will already have a character that moves and in the future i will show you how to incorporate these features but for the sake of this the character will move you will have a player most likely it might be from the standard assets from the unity first person pack or something which you can import from the asset store which will be part of the standard assets and you always need to remember that when you're going to do a trigger event either your player or your trigger or your uh, event that's going to collide needs to have a rigid body so it's often best for your player to have a rigid body and if you need that you can go component physics and rigid body or add the component down here and also that each of your objects will need a collider and because this is a ball it's got a sphere collider which is very similar you can go component physics and choose the type of collider or you can add a component to do that now what we're going to choose to do today to make this sort of very visual is i'm going to have a bunch of blocks which are going to block your way off to the next section and we're going to almost have a little stone or a little something in the floor which we'll interact with or walk into for our trigger and it will remove those objects that we've got there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just block the entrance off by just duplicating some of my objects that I've got here. So now you can see in this example that we'll hit our barrier and we can't possibly get through because there's no way. I mean, I do have a jump mechanic in this, but in this instance, we can't actually get through the barrier. So we need to be able to interact with something to do it. So I'll give you an example. What I will do is I will take one of these objects here and this is just a visual representation and what we'll do is I will just push this into the floor slightly and this is going to be act as sort of like something that we will interact with and what we need to do to make this apparent is we need to add a collision to this so what we could technically do is we could add our own cube but what I'm going to do if you wanted to do that you can go game object 3d object cube now Really, with the cube there, we could just duplicate the one we've already got, and it's got a box collider on it. We could just remove the mesh renderer, and you can see there's the outline to my collision. You can set that to is trigger because we always need it to be an is trigger um, collision event for you to be able to go inside that trigger event and activate it with um, the physics that Unity has. So from there, we need to create ourselves a script. So what I usually like to do is have a script which can exist on any of the triggers that we might have. So it doesn't just exist on the player, it'll exist on every different trigger event that we might choose to use. So what we could do is we could right click in the project panel, go create C sharp, and then call this block trigger because this is what's happened, we're blocked. So um, that's the trigger. So we can open up in Visual Studio by double clicking. And then, like I said before, you'll get this to the starting methods. And I like to just knock them down. I'll delete everything inside. And we've got the encapsulation of the two, the left and the right curly bracket. Then you can see that the class is called block trigger. Now, how are we going to go about doing what we want to do? Is that we're going to need a variable or something to hold the objects that we want to be able to remove. So what I showed you before, in square brackets, you can have serialized field because we want this to be in the inspector so we can add the objects to it, so the game objects, but we also don't need it to be public because it doesn't matter. So we can say private game object and we can type, we can have these as a name of, you could say blockage cubes for instance. And this is a private variable 
is a game object because it's going to be a bunch of game objects that we're going to want to remove and we've just given it a name of blockage cube so we know exactly what's happening. Now we need to be able to create our trigger event and actually be able to use it so we need our own built-in to use one of the built-in custom unity functions or methods. So like before we can press right void on trigger enter and because it auto completed for me it's, it's done a private void on trigger enter and on trigger and enter that all the words have a capital then in brackets we'd write collider with a capital and then other so what this means is on the trigger event we'll look for a collider and we're giving it a name just like we would reference a variable so we're just giving it a variable name of other and we're going to be looking for a collider component so in here we need to create something basic we need to and I will go the, into this more into the future, we'll need to write an if statement and an if statement just as it suggests. If we choose to do something, it will then execute some lines if that if statement is true or if that condition is met. So we need to say that if um, other dot compare tag and then in bra two brackets and then in two quotes we can write player. Then we add a bracket to the end and I'll explain this. Then we had two brackets, two curly brackets, which are left and right facing. So what we're saying here is if, when we're saying based on the parameter that we gave up here, we say other, if where or the thing that's going to collide with our trigger has a tag of player, and the best way to do it is using dot compare tag. You can look at all this in the Unity documentation. We're saying if other, and we're looking for the tag of player, so we're comparing the tags that exist in Unity, and if it's player, then we're going to choose to do some sort of functionality. So we'll say that blockage cubes dot set active in brackets is false. So what this means is that we've looked at the variable blockage cubes, and we use the built-in um, built-in things with inside Unity, which say dot set active, which means we're going to choose to deactivate or activate a game object and in bracket in normal brackets we choose and we put the word false because it can be true or false so we can activate it or deactivate it and we need to put a semicolon at the end you need to remember that because um, this this was a statement by itself it has a semicolon but if it's in um, a step an if statement which is a conditional statement you don't need the semicolon because you're always going to write some more things inside of that um, conditional statement. I've got to remember the one thing to always look out for if you click on the end of your bracket here you can see which bracket it's connected to because it will be slightly grayed and I'll do the same on this one next to player and you can see that they can join to each other because you have to have a bracket to encapsulate the whole statement and then the brackets to encapsulate what we're specifically telling to compare so we're looking at this string and the string is called player. So it's really simple, you just on trigger enter with the parameter of collider and then we're looking for the name of other. We're checking to see if the thing that we're going to collide with is the player, then we ha you set the blockage cubes to false. So what we can do is go back into unity. So we need to choose our trigger object like so, we can add our blockage collider to there and oh, nothing will appear other than our blockage cubes. And the thing is, because these cubes are, say, not one specific object, we're going to want to combine them together because we could add specifically one of these cubes to our slot that we had in the inspector, but we want to bid them all to be together so they all disappear at the same time. Really, I'll give you an example is let's say I choose this one. Now I'm just going to rename this to blockage cube one. For instance, you can click back on your trigger and add blockage cube one to our slot here. And that's going to reference that one game object here. And we're going to expect to turn that off when we go inside this trigger event. Now you need to check on your player, make sure that there's a tag of player. If not, tag it player or add the tag if you need to. Then what you can do is when you press play, you can expect that when we roll into this, you can see that the object disappears. And then because the object has disappeared, we can now move into the next area, which is perfectly fine. It might have been exactly what we wanted. But for instance, like this, what we could do is right click in our hierarchy, 
choose empty game object what we can do at the top is click on the arrow whereby the transform just click reset so it's centralized so it's just at zero 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 we can rename this to blockage cubes we can select each of our cubes that we had that we might want to get rid of let's say and what we can do is add that to our blockage cube parent game object and you can see that when I choose to turn this whole parent off it all disappears so we can do the same thing we can select back on the trigger go to the blockage cubes add those in press play and you can see that once I go into that trigger event what we can do is we can get rid of all those objects there so it's a part of our basic gameplay if we go back into the script what we could do is if we only wanted to use this once we could just say that game object dot set active is false in brackets then with a semicolon which means that we're specifying that this game object with a lowercase g because we're saying that this one specifically that we're on now is we're going to set it to deactive so what that means is that when we go inside the trigger again it won't try and turn anything off because it's already been used up so i'll give you the example and we go onto our trigger you can see that it's activated if we press play you can see down at the bottom of the screen here and we go into the object you can see it turned the object off but it also turned the trigger off so I can actually select it and if I show you in the hierarchy it's greyed out so it means that we'll never be able to interact with it again accidentally so we're keeping it very uniform and very specific and of course we could use this script over and over if we wanted let's say a trigger if I duplicate this trigger and I have trigger one I could put this down here and have the same script on it and I could have a bunch of objects which I put into the inspector and I can then have another puzzle or I could have several different triggers a part of one puzzle and it could be where I have to do a combination I have to go on block one here block two here block through here and then we can then move on so I'm just giving you ways and means that you can do basic things in C sharp which can really easily add to your gameplay so today we've specifically learned how to write a basic trigger event use a game object variable to find or specify whichever game object we want to use then look for the player that we're looking for and then set different objects where it whether it be itself or the one that you specify to false and it goes a long way to helping you do a lot of functionality within uh, Unity and C Sharp. So hopefully this helps you out. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.